Hey yo, where did all my expert volatility trader trolls go? Look guys, at the end of the day, get rich quickers mostly get broke quick. Whereas long-term investors most get rich slowly, albeit exponentially faster than any other investment class. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey and welcome to another episode of Last Week Crypto. Every Sunday, we review the performance of the largest cryptocurrencies, top gainers, as well as the latest global news stories affecting the crypto markets this past week. This week, we will discuss some of the more recent scams plaguing the crypto space, the bearish outlook in the short term for the crypto markets, as well as the bullish outlook in the long term. To check out the links to all the articles we discuss, go to CryptoKC.com forward slash last week crypto. This week's episode is brought to you by Crypto.com, an exchange with over 100 different cryptocurrencies and over 20 different fiat currencies. On Crypto.com's mobile app, you can buy crypto with bank transfers, credit, debit cards, or crypto at true cost with no markups. They also have a desktop exchange that is solely for crypto to crypto trading. If you use the link below to sign up for Crypto.com, you'll receive $25 worth of cryptocurrency for free when you use the referral code CryptoKC, all while supporting the channel. Also, every Wednesday, I conduct a weekly AMA or Ask Me Anything at Instagram.com forward slash CryptoKC. So use the link to my one and only official Instagram account listed in the description area to follow me and ask me anything you want every Wednesday. Awesome. Let's hit last week crypto. Looking at the top cryptocurrencies by market cap, Bitcoin down 3.4%, ETH down 5.6%, Binance Coin down 1.5%, and Cardano down 1.2%. Looking at the top gainers this week, Quant up 41.4%, AMP a top gainer for another week in a row up 40.8%, XDC Network up 39.6%, and Theta Fuel another top gainer from last week up 28.7%. Cool, let's kick off this week's episode with some PSAs regarding some new, as well as existing scam activity that has been ramping up in the crypto space lately. Crypto scam victim loses $384,006 to fake app. I've shed a lot of tears. Brandon Larson downloaded what he thought was a legitimate cryptocurrency app associated with a website he uses, CBS affiliate KUTV reported. Larson later discovered the app was fake and it had stolen his information. Unfortunately, it was a lookalike app and I gave access to my digital wallet to a hacker, he told the broadcaster. Ouch. It's important for all of us to be extremely mindful of lookalike mobile apps, lookalike websites, and now even lookalike hardware wallets. Scammers are sending Ledger users fake hardware wallets. The scam is an ambitious one. First appearing in May, the scammers mailed packages that contained a fake Ledger Nano wallet to the homes of Ledger users. They soldered a flash drive onto the interior of the fake wallet, and the packages also included a sealed bag with Ledger's logo on it and even shrink wrapping the box itself to appear as if it were never opened. In a Ledger blog post Thursday explaining the scam, the company said the box includes a fake letter explaining the need to replace your existing hardware wallet to secure your funds. This is a scam. The Ledger Nano is fake. A flash drive with a fake Ledger app is connected to the circuit board and instructions enclosed with the device tell the recipient to plug in the wallet and run the malicious file. To initialize the device, the user is then asked for their 24 word recovery phrase. Okay, so I think a lot of y'all came to my channel initially from the step-by-step -step how to informational videos I kicked off the channel with a couple of years ago. And if you haven't seen them in a while, here's a bit of a refresher to avoid the majority of these scams. One double and triple check the URLs of the sites you're accessing for both crypto and traditional finance products and services to ensure you're accessing the correct and official website. There are a ton of lookalike websites that pop up pretending to be the exchanges, wall providers, and everything in between with the intent to steal your login credentials or provide you with a hacked wallet. When accessing websites, also ensure that the website has the HTTPS protocol at the beginning of the URL and not just the HTTP. The HTTPS protocol signifies that the website and all the information you may input is protected with an SSL or secure sockets layer. A website that only uses HTTP is suspect and I wouldn't hang around there for long. Two, beware of any emails or text messages you receive with links in them. In fact, here's an example of a text message I received just this past Friday night. It reads, Coinbase at symbol team. Your request for withdrawal has been attempted. If this was not you, proceed here with a strange URL link. Notice that the word attempted is spelled incorrectly, missing the P amongst other strange punctuation use. These text messages and emails are sent by scammers and designed to alarm you, scare you, and get you to start acting quickly out of fear, which can lead you to inadvertently providing access to your crypto from either providing usernames and passwords 
or even worse, your private keys. Which leads us to three. Never, ever, ever give anyone your private keys. Do not type them out on your computer. Do not store them on any device connected to the internet. And if you arrive at a link that asks you for your private keys, do not enter them. Using the popular 24 or sometimes 12 word seed phrases, a hacker can drain your wallet nearly instantaneously. So don't do it. Legitimate companies like Ledger, Coinbase, Binance, etc., will never ever ask you for your login credentials and most certainly would never ask for your wallet seed phrase or private keys. Nice. So if you'd like to learn more about steps to secure your crypto, or if you were a victim of the Ledger marketing database hack, I talk extensively about security measures you can take now and implement going forward to properly secure your crypto for the long term in this video. You can use the link above to check it out. Being a little too risky and aggressive in this market can lead to people FOMOing in, aping in, or basically throwing money at new, shiny, untested, unresearched projects too quickly and either losing money from lack of liquidity, glitches in the code, or from rug pulls. It can happen to anyone, from people like you and I, to more popular people in the media spotlight. Mark Cuban hit by apparent DeFi rug pull. Live and learn, Cuban told Decrypt. Responding to a suggestion that this was a rug pull, when founders abandoned a project after cashing out, Cuban responded, I got hit like everyone else. Crazy part is, I got out. Thought they were increasing their total value locked enough, then bam. From another source, the project in question, Iron Finance, denied the fiasco was a rug pull and instead said the crash was due to panic selling and the token's algorithmic code. But again, it can happen to anyone. And I'd like to especially caution you guys to be especially weary and suspect about people in the spotlight shilling cryptos. Kim Kardashian West and other influencers are being paid to advertise cryptocurrency on social media. Though it's unknown how much Kardashian West was paid for the advertisement, a 2019 court filing revealed that she can reportedly earn between $300,000 and $500,000 for a single Instagram post. For long-term social media deals, she can sometimes earn millions of dollars. Kardashian West did not immediately respond to CNBC, make its request for comment. She was advertising Ethereum Max, and other celebrities, including Floyd Mayweather, have endorsed Ethereum Max as well. Mayweather brought up the altcoin during the Bitcoin 2021 conference earlier this month and was in turn booed off the stage. Ethereum Max was also accepted as payment for tickets to Mayweather's recent fight with YouTuber Logan Paul. Though all cryptocurrency is considered to be a risky, volatile investment, the altcoins being pushed out by these influencers, like Ethereum Max, require even more caution, experts warn, especially when advertised to younger audiences. Yes, correct, Ethereum Max is trash. These influencers don't understand crypto, and even business mavericks like Mark Cuban aren't completely plugged in enough to ensure their investment decisions are solid. And when stars start shilling someone else's coin, you should especially be careful when they're shilling their own. Pro wrestler MJF creates his own crypto because Bitcoin and Dogecoin are quote, garbage. By masterfully creating my own coin, I'm giving you a way to be part of my personal economy, Friedman said in a note to his fans. I can't think of anything smarter to be a part of, since I will go down as the greatest star who's ever lived. Friedman maintained a disparaging tone throughout his message, perhaps for a comical effect like his on-screen character, and said buying his creator coin with the Rally Network should be easy, even for the dumbest of the dumb with a credit card. Wow, quite the charmer. Moving on, so as if blatant malicious scams and crypto incompetent influencers aren't causing enough ruckus in the industry, there are inherent technical risks in some protocols just from the sheer newness of the tech. People have been participating in DeFi without understanding the risks. Here's what to know about cryptocurrency-based DeFi. Meltem Demir's CoinShares Chief Strategy Officer, I think every DeFi protocol and every DeFi project has a different level of risk and a different level of reward, said Demir's. But it's important to understand the reason the reward is high is because the risk is higher. The reason we see high yield is there is risk here. And he's right. There's a ton of risk in new software products and services from hacks and glitches to insufficient liquidity. A lot can go wrong. Which is why I don't really recommend putting any funds you absolutely cannot afford to lose into DeFi protocols, including lending, yield farming, etc. The tech will mature over time, but right now there's a lot of risk to be mindful of before deciding to invest. All right, all right, let's get into some stories that paint a short-term bearish outlook for the markets at large. Big short investor Michael Burry warns the mother of all crashes is coming and predicts crypto and meme stocks will plummet. Casual investors buying meme stocks and cryptocurrencies are signing up for devastating losses, Michael Burry warned on Thursday. 
All hype and speculation is doing is drawing in retail before the mother of all crashes, the investor tweeted. When crypto falls from trillions or meme stocks fall from tens of billions, Main Street losses will approach the size of countries. The problem with crypto, as in most things, is the leverage, he tweeted. If you don't know how much leverage is in crypto, you don't know anything about crypto. And he ain't wrong. Crypto load of $100 billion stirs US worry over hidden danger. Regulators are worried about hidden risks to investors and even the financial system stemming from a fast-growing corner of the crypto market meant to be immune from volatility. At the end of May, the total market capitalization of stable coins, which include ones offered by crypto firms Tether and Center, broke $100 billion. But in recent weeks, lawmakers and officials from the Federal Reserve and administration have expressed alarm in both public and private that some consumers won't actually be protected should one of the firms not have the backing they purport to have. Administration officials have expressed concern to representatives of stablecoin issuers in recent weeks that consumers don't understand that money held in a stablecoin isn't protected by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp. And that in some cases, they could potentially lose money on a stablecoin. They're dangerous to both their users and, as they grow, to the broader financial system, said Lev Manon, an academic fellow at Columbia's law school, in testimony to a Senate banking subcommittee last week. Yes, correct. They're absolutely right. Much like the US dollar is printed willy-nilly, so is the stablecoin Tether. And much like the reverse repo fiasco where treasuries are being rehypothecated, so is the stablecoin Tether. With U.S. Treasuries, rehypothecation means that multiple financial institutions list the one same treasury on their balance sheet like they own it. So imagine 20 hedge funds claiming they own the same one treasury. If one of them went insolvent, it would start a massive systematic collapse of the financial system. The same thing with Tether. We don't know how many times a specific Tether token has been lent out, who actually owns it, the underlying value of Tether's assets, etc. It's absolutely a ticking time bomb that I will go into more detail on in a video soon. Hey, and just a quick update on the reverse repo fiasco. Holy moly, Fed's reverse repos spiked to $756 billion, undoing six months of quantitative easing. In opposite direction, Fed's QE pushes assets past $8 trillion. The Fed sold a record $756 billion in treasury securities this morning in an exchange for cash via overnight reverse repos. This was up by a stunning 45% from yesterday's operations of $521 billion. Our favorite savage, Finn Henrik, puts it into perspective. For reference, that's the equivalent of the annual US military budget, all in a 24-hour time period. And in case you missed one of the previous episodes where I explained the reverse repo market, there is literally so much cash in the current financial system that banks have nowhere to put it. So the least worst place to put the cash is the reverse repo market, where they give the cash to the Fed overnight to then buy back later with interest. The alternative is to lend the money to extremely risky borrowers with insufficient assets to secure the loans or ones that are on the verge of insolvency. Again, like I said the past few episodes, the current global financial system is a game of musical chairs with not nearly enough chairs to sit in when the music stops. Excellent. A couple other bearish stories to be mindful of, with regulations forcing Bitcoin mining operations out of China, miner capitulation is putting pressure on the Bitcoin price. The hash rate of the Bitcoin network has declined by approximately 27% since May 15th, as a confluence of a mining ban in provinces in China, as well as a large decrease in the price of Bitcoin has led to many operations temporarily turning off their machines. With a decrease of over 50% in revenue in a little more than a month's time, miner profitability has come under serious stress, and this is undoubtedly placing downward pressure on the price of Bitcoin. Lovely. And as always, every month, another thing to be mindful of, the last Friday of every month, options expire, which usually causes craziness in the markets. Ethereum faces largest ever options expiry as bears appear to dominate. A record number of Ether options is set to expire on June 25th as ETH looks to Bitcoin for reverse in its price momentum. So the rest of this month and the quarter should be quite interesting and undoubtedly volatile. And as the value of crypto increases or decreases in these crazy times, make sure you are transferring your crypto off of exchanges to hold safely in a cold storage hardware wallet. You can scroll down to the description area below to access the correct and official sites of my recommended hardware wallets. BC Vault is my personal favorite. Another option is the Ledger Nano Backup Pack. So scroll down to check them out.
Or if you would rather make income from your idle digital assets you're planning to hold for the long term, you can safely earn interest with services provided by BlockFi. With a BlockFi interest account, your cryptocurrency can earn up to 8.6% APY. Interest accrues daily and is paid monthly. There are no hidden fees and no minimum balances. So if you're interested in learning more about BlockFi, you can get up to a $250 Bitcoin bonus when you use the link in the description area to sign up, all while supporting the channel. Protecting your ability to generate income so you can buy more crypto is another important thing to consider. So if you'd like to learn more about the advanced technical concepts of blockchain and become a developer in the space, check out Ivan on Tech's Academy. If you use the link below, you can access the Academy at a discounted price. So scroll down to check it out. All right, let's wrap things up with long-term bullish outlooks for the crypto market. As institutional adoption and demand increases for crypto, Goldman expands in crypto trading with plans for Ether options. Despite all the warnings from regulators about the risks posed by crypto's extreme volatility and role in money laundering, investment banks are stepping up to offer Bitcoin services to their big clients. Even after prices plummeted in May, falling from about $60,000 to $33,000 in a matter of days, hedge funds are still enthusiastic to trade Bitcoin. We've actually seen a lot of interest from clients who are eager to trade as they find these levels as a slightly more palatable entry point, McDermott said in a phone interview on Thursday. We see it as a cleansing exercise to reduce some of the leverage and the excess in the system, especially from a retail perspective. Awesome. And one of the first original institutional investors to dive into Bitcoin and Ether continues to branch out, becoming DeFi focused. Grayscale exploring 13 more crypto assets for its trusts. And here's a chart showing assets they currently offer on the left and assets under consideration on the right. The newest additions are in bolded text like 1inch, Banker, Curve, Internet Computer, Kava, Kyber, Loopring, Near, Polygon, Ren, Solana, Uma, and 0x. And if you're looking to expand your crypto portfolio into DeFi, this is a great list of projects to consider investing in. So check it out and do your own research beforehand to make sure it makes sense for you and your current financial situation. Moving right along, this story I found pretty interesting. GOP to accept Bitcoin, crypto donations, and effort to retake House. The National Republican Congressional Committee will begin accepting campaign contributions in cryptocurrency, the party announced Thursday. The House Republicans' campaign arm said the move would allow it to use new technology to support candidates as the GOP intensifies its bid to retake the House in next year's midterm elections. Bullish 100%. Man, crypto isn't going anywhere as the NRCC joins an exponentially growing list of organizations embracing cryptocurrency. While some organizations are embracing it, a big regulatory one has seemingly decided to look the other way for now. SEC does not plan to weigh in on crypto regulation in 2021. The SEC announced this year's regulatory agenda, and while it includes plans to investigate cybersecurity and regulate short sales, there was no mention of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, generally speaking. Nice. The longer they wait, the more entrenched crypto will become in our society until we'll reach this point where there's not a lot they would be able to do about it, even if they wanted to. Bullish. One more nugget for you guys this week. DeFi plays, the next 12 to 18 months will be lucrative, but following that, I think the big two to five year crypto play will be in gaming. And it's already starting to heat up. An estate in virtual world Decentraland just sold for nearly a million dollars. Digital real estate investment firm Republic Realm acquired a non-fungible token, NFT, of the virtual estate referred to as a land token for nearly 1.3 million mana. While the sale is the highest land sale in terms of dollars, there have been previous sales that involved a higher number of mana when the token wasn't worth as much. We can't wait to announce our big plans for this estate, the platform tweeted. Our commitment to building and developing the metaverse is stronger than ever. Sweet. So while the markets will likely continue to be bearish and potentially melt down in the short term, let's take it from El Salvador versus the World Bank. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that was Last Week Crypto with me, Crypto Casey. If you enjoyed the episode, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more crypto content. To check out the links to all the articles we discussed, go to CryptoCasey.com forward slash Last Week Crypto. So are you more bearish or bullish on the crypto markets in the short term? What about the long term? What do you guys think about the future of gaming and crypto? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.